tragic, blazing photographs on the cover of newspapers all around the world tell the same story. The Amazon is under threat. We are heading towards a tipping point when 20 to 25 percent of the Amazon rainforest is deforested. Currently, we're at 17 percent deforestation, giving us only 20 to 30 years before this luscious hotbed of biodiversity, incredible carbon sink, source of water to the Earth's atmosphere, and amazing natural resource is turned into a dry savanna and carbon source. The U.S. National Cancer Institute, for one, believes that hundreds of Amazon plants could be used to fight cancer cells. In fact, over 25% of Western medications today are derived from rainforest plants, yet only 1% of plants in the Amazon have been evaluated for their medicinal properties. Who are we to look to in order to solve our problems? My name is Talia Khan, and I believe that the sources of the solutions to the world's greatest problems lie in the head of this man and others like him. He is a knowledge bearer, a truth seeker, a shaman of the Amazon. Davi Kopanawa is known for protecting his indigenous community's rights after gold miners and illegal loggers came with new diseases and decimated his community's population. It is said that every time a shaman dies, it is as if a library has been burned down. That is because the myriad uses of Amazon plants are not new to them and others who have lived off the land for generations. How did I get into this field at all? During high school, I listened to a talk on the TED Radio Hour by Dr. Mark Plotkin, where he talked about his journeys into the Amazon, learning from shamans about how they use the plants around them as traditional medicine. His story and his life stayed in my mind, and as I kept thinking about it, I became ever more determined to go myself to the Brazilian Amazon and uncover the material properties of native plants. So, last year during my junior year of college, I contacted a professor in the remote region of Santarém, Pará, Brazil. I asked if I could work with him on a tree called Breu. I had done some research into the topic, and I found a paper that talked about using this tree, Breu Branco, the resin that it creates, as a green adhesive. I thought it was amazing because the idea came directly from indigenous people who use this resin as a caulking agent to seal gaps in between wooden planks in their canoes. I couldn't wait to go to the Amazon myself and see what other ingenious ways the people there had devised of using the plants around them. This past summer, I did go, and I spent the time collecting and extracting plants and essential oils and resins it was a steep learning curve, to be sure. I had to learn a whole new field of research, and I also had to learn Portuguese, because almost nobody there spoke English. But this experience was incredibly eye-opening for me. During my time during field work, I also had the opportunity to join a local Carimbo music group, taste the regional foods, and learn from those who know the forest best. Unfortunately, however, after I left Santarém, the area in which I collected my plants for research was burnt down in an illegal fire, bringing the problems of the Amazon very close to home. What are we to do to protect these invaluable resources and utilize this vast database of knowledge that's held there? I believe that we must learn from indigenous people about the incredible resources the forest has to offer. And we must work with them to create and sell natural products that economically disincentivize deforestation. How many of you have heard of acai? Yeah? Well, I bet if I had asked you that 20 years ago, none of you would have raised your hands. That's because 20 years ago, acai was only a small part of the Brazilian economy. Today, it's a $1.5 billion industry, and 
it generates more revenue than cattle and soy. And cattle and soy and illegal timber are the three topmost causes of deforestation in the Amazon. This means better land management, more money for local producers, and a fruit that we can all enjoy. These ranchers and these cattle farmers can't just be kicked out of business. We have to give them another way to keep working, but do it more sustainably. So how about we bring technology and sustainability best practices to them? This is Mauro Lucio Costa, a Brazilian rancher in the northern state of Pará who is doing just that. He, like many others in the region, was used to ranching the way his father did and his grandfather did and did not want to listen to the environmental advocates and government officials bugging him to update his practices. However, in 2002, Mr. Costa decided that he would change and he employed new sustainability practices leading to five more pounds of meat per acre than before. This means he has healthier land, healthier cattle, and a healthier pocketbook. Mr. Costa is now traveling through the region, teaching his practices to other ranchers in the hope of transforming the cattle industry in the Amazon. Here's another example. Paulo Nunes is a Brazilian agronomist, and he partnered with a local tribe, the Munduruku tribe, to create a local Brazil nut packing factory. Producing these Brazil nuts locally caused their value to increase by a factor of 20. And this is money that stays in the Amazon directly supporting communities. And these are not it. It's not just Brazil nuts and acai. When I was in Pará, I saw beautiful roofs made of natural fibers. I used makeup made of urucu. I ate amazing fruits like tapareba and kupuasu. And I had the most delicious chocolate I've ever had made of a blend of different types of cocoa found and sold only in the Amazon. On my bug bites, I put copaiba and angiroba oil. In fact, copaiba oil is used to cure so many ailments that there's a joke Time doesn't cure anything. What cures is angiroba and copaiba oil. How incredible would it be if, like acai and Brazil nuts, the whole world were able to have access to these amazing products? This would stimulate the Brazilian economy and give local communities the ability to protect themselves, their land, and their knowledge for future generations. What can we do to support these people and these industries? The Rainforest Alliance certifies natural products and it uses its rigorous social, environmental, and economic sustainability standard to do so. So this means next time you go to the supermarket and you want to buy coffee, buy the coffee with the green frog on it. Another important thing to do is donate to organizations like the Amazon Conservation Team, headed by Dr. Mark Plotkin. Another amazing organization is Amazon Creative Labs, headed by Dr. Carlos Nobri. These organizations bring technology to indigenous communities, enabling them to protect themselves from illegal loggers and drug traffickers, and catalog their botanical knowledge using blockchain technology to ensure that they maintain their access to their intellectual property. This is not enough. We cannot just donate and think that that will save the Amazon. Academic institutions such as MIT and Harvard must work together with large investment firms and companies in the fields of food, timber, chemicals, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals, they must all come together to the table with nonprofit organizations and local tribes in order to bring the incredible knowledge of these tribes from plant to pill. Our Amazon is under threat, and we really have only two options. Either we can sit here feeling helpless watching its destruction, or we can demand that institutions 
with the economic, social, and political ability to support on-the-ground groups, do so. By creating new, sustainable, deforestation-free value chains, local communities will be able to regenerate the rainforest. So, how about we save our ailing planet the Amazon way? Let's put some copa iba oil on it. Thank you. <laughs>